Do you want to play the game Test Kitchen Apocalypse? <laughs> yes, I'm, it would be my entire <laughs> life to play the game Test Kitchen Apocalypse. Okay, it's, a, it's if there was an apocalypse and you're in the Test Kitchen, like a zombie apocalypse, yep. what piece of equipment from the kitchen would you grab to defend yourself? My helmet. But how would that defend yourself against the zombies? Yeah. Like when the dough hook I could see as a weapon. My brains. <laughs> they're going for my brains, so I won't be able to get them. Okay, but do you want to pick another one that's more of a weapon? Brad. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, I'm Claire. I'm in the BA Test Kitchen, and today I'm making gourmet Krispy Kreme. There used to be a Krispy Kreme. I don't know if it's still there, in my town growing up. I think I could probably count the number of times I've had Krispy Kreme on one to two hands. I have to say, of all of the sweets out there, I don't generally gravitate toward donuts first, but I'm so overwhelmed by the visuals of these donuts that I'm actually very excited. And I do like making donuts because I like working with yeast dough and, and deep frying. It's like, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty psyched. From my point of view, it wouldn't be that hard to really make a lot of different varieties because it's all just one dough. And it depends on how you cut it and then fill it and ice it. There's so many kinds. I'm so excited. Oh, the cream looks kind of gross. I don't know if I want to eat that cream. This is like Twinkie style. They basically inject at points all around some cream into the middle. So a chocolate filled. Again, it's like make pastry cream, melt some chocolate into it. You have chocolate pastry cream. Is this jelly? Let's find out. Oh yeah. Well, that's a lot of jelly. This is Oreo. Oh wow, it's like an Oreo cream on the inside. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> I don't need to destroy all of these, but you get the idea. I'm gonna feel terrible. I do not, today's gonna be rough. It's extremely airy, very, very light, and yet heavy at the same time. Like this is such a light donut. It feels like it's on the verge of being overproofed, in which case, an overproof donut absorbs a ton of oil. This is a mistake I've made in the past. When that happens, if you were to squeeze the sides, you have like noticeable like oil, like, a, like you're squeezing a sponge, like it, it exudes. But this doesn't really have that. That to me just says there's like something else going on in this donut besides yeast, like maybe some kind of dough conditioners or stabilizers or something like that. What is this? I know, you know that they fill the rings? Why would you do that? That's too I think far. it's kind of brilliant. I love them so much. I love how they like melt in your mouth. It's overwhelmingly artificially vanilla y. And they're the perfect size. They, I do appreciate that they're like sort of petite. Yeah, you can eat two and you feel good about it. <laughs> wow, I'm nervous. Did you guys get these from Penn Station? Yeah, the only, the only brick and mortar Krispy Kreme and all. At least Going Manhattan. to Penn Station for me means I get two donuts <laughs> for the train. For dealing with that, I get two <laughs> yeah. donuts. So I've been trying to make Krispy Kremes for a while. Really? I haven't. Like at home? Yeah. Like for fun? Well, I, I don't, back in my pastry chef days. Uh -huh. How many times did you try this? A lot. A lot. How do they do this? I, yeah, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. The only good thing to come out of Penn Station, <laughs> possibly ever. This whole this episode is already about how much everyone hates Penn Station. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, wow, it's apple. That's not what I want to eat. And also you got it all over your phone. Oh, that's my that's phone. That's your phone. <laughs> Delaney, we got it all over it. Shouldn't have been standing there. Help me out here. When I heard Krispy Kreme was the next challenge, uh -huh. I said, too easy. Well, but then I said, you deserve it. Okay, thank you, Rhoda. However, I think the challenge is getting something this light and airy without having it just absorb a ton of oil in the fryer. I think that's gonna be a challenge. And the interior has just so many air pockets. I mean, it's a very even, very white, cottony, almost like flossy texture of the bread. And then it has such a thin golden ring around the outsides. And there really isn't even, as I pointed out before, there isn't a lot of oil. Often you see it like a little inner ring of, of oil that's absorbed into the donut, but that hasn't happened here. The glaze is, is white and it has, but it's so thin that it really just gives kind of a, a veil. I think I can do better in the flavor, easily. Texture, I don't think I'm going to improve this. Time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. We had to do a little bit of digging for this one. We did find them published online. They're not listed on the box. Wow, this one's a doozy. So this is for original glazed donut. Ingredients, 
Enriched wheat flour, parentheses, wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, close parentheses, water, palm oil, soybean oil, sugar. Contains 2% or less of each of the following. Yeast, soy lecithin, hydrogenated soybean oil, salt, mono and diglycerides, wheat gluten, calcium sulfate, monocalcium phosphate, BHT, dried milk powder, egg yolks, cellulose gum, calcium propionate to maintain freshness, ammonium sulfate, ascorbic acid, dicalcium phosphate, Phosphate, sorbitan monosterate, tocopherols, tricalcium phosphate, diammonium phosphate, close parentheses. And now the glaze, sugar, water, cornstarch, palm oil, calcium sulfate and or calcium carbonate, agar, dextrose, natural and artificial flavors, salt, disodium phosphate, locust bean gum and or mono and diglycerides. It's a long list. My guess is that there's a lot of trade secrets here and we're not gonna find a lot. If I were Krispy Kreme, I would heavily protect all of this proprietary information, but we'll see what we can find online. All right, they have a YouTube channel. Very self-explanatory, I think. But they come out of the fryer, they go into a rack, and then as they cool, they pass under this steady waterfall, that's the only way to describe it, of glaze, and that coats them. It's a moving belt, and then it drains away, and then they're glazed. So they get an even coating all the way around. Oh! <gasps> Look at how they're formed! Holy sh Wait, hold on. That's really important how they're formed. Yeah. What because are you doing about? it means that the dough is probably so soft it can't be rolled and cut. You know right. what I mean? Like, or like, is that just like an efficiency thing? It might be an efficiency thing to like cut down on waste, but I think it would Look be at really it though, you can tell. Yeah, it's so soft, like it has to be extruded. Which means maybe I'll have to just pipe them in a ring. Uh-huh. Alright, this is And it's also like sticky looking. Yeah, exactly. I, the music is so funny. Oh, I've always wanted one of these machines. <laughs> I don't think you can bring I in. What kind of oil they fry in? Wow, you guys, that was a really. I want to eat one. What high prep? Oh my god, there's a whole I audience. Eat it so Sorry, much. that was just like a mesmerizing yeah. video. Yeah, what <laughs> very high production <laughs> value. Donut propaganda. Do you want to try one? <laughs> you guys should come try one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's go eat one. They're so light. The lightness is. Like, imagine how light they would be without the glaze. Yeah, you know? they'd weigh nothing. One donut weighs 53 grams. It does that's, like kind of taste nothing. of fry oil. It does. But it's surprisingly not 51. They're all really close in size. He's it's, got it. I think that, I think this there's- is one of the easy ones. I think like it follows the normal pattern of gourmet makes, which is there's flavor and then there's texture. And yeah. you often you can get one and not the other. And I think like flavor, easy to improve. Texture, no way in hell I'm gonna get something like mm. this. All right, here's here are the parts of the process. Mixing the dough. I have to do some experimenting with proofing, do I want to do the traditional two proofs, single proof, then I go into forming the dough, letting them proof, frying them, and glazing them. Before I tackle the glaze, what I really have to focus on is the dough and the proofing and the frying and try to figure out that process. So I have a recipe that I developed a while back for a yeast donut. I'm going to use that as my dropping off point. That'll be round one. I've been told that there's one working stin mixer in the <laughs> What was that? Holy sh**, that thing is it's enormous. a monster. Um, Look at the size of this. I know, but it's, so it's not on a tilt head. So mm. it's able to bring a little more power to the equation. Oh, that's cool. See how the bowl... Wow. Oh! Tasty. They thought of everything. Wow. Here we go. Wow. It's like butter. Joe's got nowhere to hide, Claire. That's pretty fast. All okay. right. Cool. Thanks, Chris. All right, great. Go get them. Okay. Feeling better already. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take the risk that this yeast has not gone bad, and I'm not going to proof it. You technically don't have to proof yeast if you know that it's alive, and I think I'm okay to take that risk. All right. Let me get started. 30 ounces of bread flour, half an ounce baking powder, half ounce kosher salt, all right, two ounces white sugar. So I'm gonna let this mix for a good long while before I add the butter. Cheese. Really elastic, which is great. It's very satisfying. Here, everyone, everyone give it a poke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm covering this bowl. This has to rise. Now that this has risen, frankly, it needs more time, but I'm just gonna go for it. So if they don't turn out, I'm gonna blame you first. Okay, so this dough has semi-proofed. And now I wanna form the donut, so I'm gonna roll it out. With active dry yeast, there's always a step called pet where you punch down the dough, and that basically knocks all the air out, but it also refeeds the yeast. The dough feels nice, it feels soft. Basically like to proof the donuts on their individual square parchment because it makes it a lot easier to take a very light donut that could easily lose its shape through handling into the fryer. I'm going to cut them. And they're gonna expand beyond the dimensions of the cutter. But basically, so this one is an eight and a half centimeter diameter. I think I'm gonna go a little bit smaller because they're gonna grow in size. That looks like this. I think that seems reasonable. I think so. Maybe I wanna make them a little bit bigger. I don't know. I think they should all be the same size as each other. They don't necessarily have to be the same size as the original. Also, they shrink once you kind of punch them. Oh God, this is what I need right now. Do you now. wanna play with the scraps? Just as like a stress relieving exercise? I'm, I'm, I just, I'm gonna eat another donut later. Oh, there you go, that's, then, that's probably better. I would love a piece of one. Oh God, thank you. I don't know how that many that is. Why did donuts have holes? The, was it like some philosophical question? Yeah, it's not <laughs> well, they don't have to have holes. Phil donuts don't have holes. But I suppose that a donut has a hole t for even cooking so that there can be full heat and oil circulation all the way around. But this is what it looks like. I think it's not bad. I'm going to do that on a second sheet of parchment with my remaining cutouts. But basically, now it's time for these to proof a second time. I don't think this is gonna take that long. Usually the second proof goes a little bit faster. These donuts here were just ones that didn't fit on that first sheet. While those are rising again, I should start my oil because once those are proofed, I don't want them to go too much longer because then they'll overproof and then they tend to absorb a lot of oil. So I'm gonna start heating some vegetable oil. All right, so we're at 340, so we're almost exactly at the right temp. I wanna start by throwing some of these guys into the oil. So I'm gonna start turning these because it looks like they're getting decent color on the first side. And I think I've almost hit that point where I have that ring. All right, these are done. I mean, they don't, they don't look bad. These feel very light, which is good. That's what I was going for. Hold on, can I get a photo? They look really good. You want me to weigh one? Let's see. So these were around 50, between 50 and 53 grams each. The original Krispy Kreme with the glaze. So that's 50.3 grams, and one of these is 53.3 grams. Pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it apart. It's warm, but not hot. <laughs> it's not that greasy. So it's a little overproofed, but just let me know what you think of that. We need to throw something else into this challenge. No, Rhoda, we're good. But you like nailed it on the first try. Oh, hear that? We've never said that on this show. <laughs> no, I've it's cursed it's you. good, right? I mean, there's no glaze, obviously. Mm. Good. They look pretty good. So the first side is a little drier, but the second side, where all those air bubbles are rising to the top, when I squeeze it, see that oil that comes out? I feel like the Krispy Kremes don't really do that, and so I have to be more careful about that proof. You see, it's just like this second fry side is just like it's so airy, and then it kind of collapses. So, I do I'm gonna work on that. Right, maybe you'll get on the second try. Maybe I'll get on the second try. Nada tried yours, it was really hard to go back to this. Oh, it's, so it's like music to my ears, Rhoda. We didn't even plan that. I didn't even tell her to say it. <laughs> I'm at a point where I should try to incorporate the glaze so I can see what the overall sweetness level is. So I'm gonna move on to glaze. So I'm gonna start with, let's call it 200 grams of powdered sugar, pinch of kosher salt, call it a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So it might be a little thick, but no, it seems like on the earlier ones it's thinned out pretty well. 
Don't you think mine look better? Yeah. Okay, great. So they taste a little <laughs> coconutty because we didn't have refined coconut oil. Oh, there's a little bit of fat. Coconut no, oil? no, no, just in the glaze. Actually, oh, there's like a little bit of that oil. What makes it like set up? I think it makes it like thicker. They look darker. Yes, definitely got more color. And here, I'll let you. I'll let you take loftier. take whatever. Take any any of those. Okay. Because this is just a um. This is a first pass, really. Hmm. It seems right that little bit of coconut. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. We can just call it a flavor. But it seems like it's supposed to be mm. there. You have to make them lighter. Color is flavor. Really? You think so? I mean, just go for, for a, that, lo a like, lower oil that time, maybe? Yeah, that visual and that wrap. That's the, true. The roundness as opposed to the like. Um, is is this amount of color acceptable? Yes. Like these are. This is a little bit lighter. Yes. I, like that's I do, close. and I think also you know, see how this is like you're getting so much lift that it's going um, like inner tube height on the side, whereas yeah. that has like that life savory, very round. Doing great so far. Thanks, She's smiling it. Nailing it. Do you think this is the most success I've ever had at this point in gourmet makes? Just say yes. Perfect. Here's the plan. I'm going to make another batch of this dough with one crucial change, and that is I'm going to create a roux using some of the flour and milk. And the idea there is that when I add it back to the dough, it increases the ability of the dough to retain moisture. And then when you cook them, they have an even softer, more tender texture because of that extra moisture. So I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna set this aside. This dough will be exactly the same as the first batch, except I'm using all-purpose flour instead of bread, and I'll be adding this cooked roux mixture. <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll set up the dough, I'll let it sit overnight. I'm hoping tomorrow, not only will the flavor be a little bit better, a little more nuanced, but I'll have improved texture, I'll work on kind of really dialing in the cutting and proofing and frying. Huge success. Everyone said so. Hunzi was like, you're done. Carla was like, you're done. Chris was like, you're done. And I'm still going. My confidence level's pretty high. Mostly because I've had a lot of experience with donuts. So I have a maybe a broader, deeper knowledge base than I have on, say, Sour Patch Kids. So into the fridge. We'll come back in the morning and check on it. Parting inspirational words for Claire tomorrow. If you're having a bad moment, what would you yourself right oh, now. Oh, like my current self to say to my future self when I get frustrated? Just go back to the first version. Because it was really good. I am actually excited about today. I'm excited to see the dough. I'm excited to make some donuts. So you can see that the dough has risen, which is great. So that means I can go straight into rolling and cutting. This is basically best case scenario because cold dough is easier to work with. The first pass was, I think, so close and just needs some final tweaking, so I think by the end of today, I'm gonna have something that I'm proud of. One of the problems yesterday was, I think they overproofed a little bit, but when they went into the oil, all of those air bubbles rose to the top of the donut. The heat expanded it and it rose to the top, so there was like lots of air bubbles only on one side of the donut. I think to, one idea I have to try to prevent that from happening is not only just to proof them less and to blanch them in the oil on both sides initially, but also to rotate them as they're proofing so that the gas is sort of e more evenly distributed. But for now, I'm just gonna cover these and let them proof at room temperature. And yesterday they went about an hour, so I'm gonna start checking them earlier. This one is not good. This one is turning out bad. First of all, it's underproofed. It has that dark ring. I sort of feel like there's too much baking powder in it maybe, but the hole is like closing up. I don't want that to happen. Maybe the blanching it in the oil is a problem. I think that's the problem. I think what's happening is I'm setting the outside layer of dough in the oil and drying it out and then but the center is continuing to expand as it cooks I think I have to cut out that step basically so I gotta let them just go on one side and then the other side here's where it's talking about how it's split do you see that ow damn it's really hot 
you can see in that ring, instead of it being smooth, there's like a kind of like splintering. So the smaller, the donut holes that I cut, because they're smaller, they come up to room temperature faster. I think these are actually proofed. I kind of want to fry all of them and just throw them in there and see, see how they turn out. See, th this is the problem. It's like kind of dense, kind of dense, and then big air bubble rather than something like this, which is so uniform all the way through. The oil's cooler. I used all-purpose flour instead of bread. I, I added the roux and they proofed last time. If you think, Rona, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I did. You Why did you make not... so many changes from the, the recipe yesterday? Because I, we nitpicked was so about, close. I know we nitpicked about what we would change and then I tried to change everything. <laughs> I feel like we should just go back to where you were and just not proof it as so The only thing you didn't like was the bubbles on the underside. Right, right. That's what I was trying to fix. I think there needs, can I just sit here with my brain and, think, and the recipe and think about it? Just really thought I was gonna finish right now. And I was just gonna make some pastry cream and some ganache and I was just gonna spend the rest of the afternoon decorating donuts. Instead, this is what I have. I'm gonna make another batch of dough that's the same as the first batch from yesterday, but I'm gonna use all-purpose flour instead of bread and I think a little less baking powder. How close were you yesterday? Like, what was the, deal? the consensus was three people in a row were like, you nailed it. And I was like, then why did I even change anything? Did you pay them to say that? No, <laughs> right? It, they just said it, dialed it. I'm gonna do like a Boston cream, I'm like gonna go wild. Cause that part's fun and easy. Oh, fun, 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 fun. And like ganache, frosting, I got, I got sprinkles. Oh my God, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. I just gotta get the dough. The dough looks great. I don't need to do that, I don't need to do it that way. Now I'm gonna cover this. Let it proof. I think it'll go about an hour. While that's proofing, just to keep the momentum moving, I'm going to at least do something that I know will work and that will taste good, which is a custard filling. So I'm gonna make some pastry cream, melt some chocolate into half of it, then I'll get I'll have my vanilla and chocolate fillings. Is there more milk? So I'm I'm streaming the milk mixture into the egg mixture. So I have chocolate, vanilla, custard filling, half vanilla, and now I'm stirring the chocolate. So the heat of the custard has melted the chocolate. These two are gonna go in the fridge until they're fully chilled and set. And then I'm gonna put into pastry bags and that will be ready for filling. I'm making the, the pink frosting and chocolate frosting for the outside of the donut. One chocolate, just regular, and one white chocolate that I'm gonna flavor with freeze-dried strawberries that we pulverized. <laughs> Ooh. Give me the pinkest pink. I'm gonna need a box. Okay. All right. All right. I like electric pink. This is a gel food coloring. A little pinker than theirs, but that's okay. So I'm gonna keep these in here under a very, very low flame, where they'll be warm and still liquid. And okay, now I have to clean up, regroup check on my dough, and I'm hoping to move into rolling, proofing, and frying, and hoping for the best. Our dough, she has risen, nice and soft and bouncy. I'm gonna turn, turn it out. And I wanna try to not add a lot of flour this time for rolling because I don't wanna dry out the surface. I'm just kind of trying to go back to what I did before. The oil, it's not necessarily intentional. I'm just gonna try one at 350 and see what happens. Wow, it's very, very lightweight. It 
So this is the first side, and it definitely seems like that the first side that goes in the fryer turns out the nicest. So 49 grams. So this is even lighter than Krispy Kreme, but again, thickness and everything, a little bit different. There's some larger air pockets, but they don't seem to follow that same pattern of like, there being a kind of a, a tunnel of air on one side. I think this is good. I think that another couple minutes of proofing, I'll toss another one in. And then if that's good, everything will go in the fridge and I'll just fry in batches. I'm hoping I can like shoehorn this into the end of the day and then everyone can go home. Delicious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test this guy. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. I'm not, I'm not gonna puncture that. So, that one was kind of a failure. I got it, I don't know why it happened. I got a huge air pocket in it. I guess they're just like proofing so fast. I don't know. I'm gonna fry these. I think, I think we're there. Cause if we're not there, then I'm not, I don't have time to do it again today and I might as well just hurry up. Look at how cute these are. Little globes. Um, these are splitting apart. Ay, 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 these are a disaster. Chris, why aren't they good? Don't look at that side, just look at that side. Yeah, just flip them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they don't all look that bad. I like this one, this one, this one, and this one. And those are, these are okay. Actually, they like all look okay, but there's some issues. Mostly, they're getting air pockets of wildly different sizes and shapes. On the one hand, they seem underproved because of the way they're sitting in the oil, and on the other hand, they seem overproof because the air is expanding so much and then they're collapsing. Getting lots of big air bubbles like that. Like, that's not gonna work. Big air pocket right there. So, I'm just like a little confused about what's happening because it seems like both overproofing and underproofing at the same time. I think I have to go back and rethink a little bit more about the dough. It's not really working. The only thing I can really do now is think about the glaze so that we don't have time for another batch of dough today. So I'm gonna take the amount of glaze that I put together before, see how, what my yield is from these donuts. With the glaze on it, it's like, that doesn't look so bad in comparison. Well, I'm happy with the glaze. I think we can end on that note. I have to try the dough again. I'm torn between only changing one thing at a time or changing everything. Today's day three. I forgot to do that thing where I was gonna go home and research this issue. So now to think on the fly about how am I going to change the dough that I've been working on to fix some of those like overproofing issues and the size of the air bubbles. What did I not like about the first version? I am basically going back to the first version, but no baking powder. I did to take on the baking powder will correct for that issue that was happening from the very beginning. Instead of using flour to roll out the dough, I think I basically want to roll it out between sheets of greased parchment paper to, so that there's like a layer of oil protecting the surface of the dough so it doesn't dry out so much. Last week I made the fillings and the frostings, which should be fine. They hold, hold up for a long time, but I want to check on them. Okay. Delicious. So this is my chocolate ganache, and this is my white chocolate strawberry ganache. So these should be fine. They just need to be gently rewarmed so that they melt again. And then here are my pastry creams, AKA my fillings. And then I can get these into piping bags fitted with star tip for filling. The glaze that I made on Thursday, first of all, doesn't hold, but obviously I used it just to glaze the donuts that I already had, so I have to make that again. Take a look at the dough. It's risen, now it's hitting the top of the plastic, so I think we're good to go and move on to the next step.
side by side. That's not too bad. The texture is nice. It's it's really pull apart, kind of bready. And yeah, there's some bigger air pockets, but it doesn't look like it's absorbed a ton of oil, which is a, a plus. Mm, flavor's good. Visually, this is not my favorite batch, but I think in terms of texture, these are the closest so far. Okay, so here's a box of Krispy Kreme, flown in fresh every day. All right, so the chocolate, Oh, I see, some of these are glazed. Okay, so the jelly filled are glazed, the chocolate frosted are not glazed, so I'm gonna leave some of these non-glazed. The donut donuts with frosting are glazed, so I, I have quite a few to glaze, but I'm gonna go ahead and glaze what I have so far, as much as I can, so I can let them set. Okay, so now let me move on to the filling. And I wanna basically poke the tip into the center of the donut and then start to squeeze. So this is why I'm using the star tip because it's kind of pointy. I wanna fill them before I put the frosting on. Chocolate on these guys, and I think chocolate on that one, and then a couple of these with strawberry, and then I'm done. Probably need to rewarm some of this ganache. I wanna melt it, and then if it's a little broken, I can whisk in a little water to smooth it out, and then I should be good to go. I'm gonna dip this guy, and let the excess drip, and then turn over, and then sprinkles while it's still wet. I dip these in record time. And they look great. All right, I'm done. Great. I'm actually that really excited awesome. about them. Yeah? The, you know, they don't look as perfect as a Krispy Kreme, like these, like this is, this is like emoji yeah. level. Oh, for sure. Perfect cartoon donut. But at least, you know, mine look homemade, that's okay. Then Chris, you're gonna try one. Can I give you one to try? Yeah, I'm but gonna is there give one you... with custard? That would be more oh. fun. Yeah, do you want vanilla custard or chocolate custard? Chocolate custard. Yes, I was hoping you were gonna say that. Ooh. Oh, not the best custard placement. Do you want a little more though? Sure, pipe, pipe it right in. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like artisanal. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's yeah, getting yeah. that, Claire. I'm very confident about the custard. Oh. It's just chocolate pastry cream. It's so good though. It is so good. You just do whole chocolate melted into it, no cocoa. Just, I made one pastry cream, vanilla, and then melted chocolate into half. Oh. No and cocoa. Like, just adds like that little bit of edge to the pastry cream. Yeah. It's like perfect. And like, I love the amount of sweetness in the cream. Cause Ooh. like it's good on its own. It tastes in the glaze. glaze. Just ganache. Yeah, not too sweet at all. Mm. You know, it comes mm. off as being like a little bit breadier than like just like an enriched, like super buttery, mm. super eggy, you know, kind of dough. I think that makes it really stand up particularly well against the filling. Mm. That looks good. I mean, this looks highly appealing. My problem with like store-bought Boston creams is that there's never enough cream. Oh, well, there you go. Take a look at that. Very yummy. This is so good. This is delicious. Mm. What's up like with the chocolate? How do you do this? Just ganache. Oh, just and ganache. melted and then dipped. Christina just told me that Alex Beggs is writing a newsletter about you and your skincare routine. She described your complexion <laughs> as gl glazed donut. And I just want to say that it that you have beautiful dewy skin and it is, it is not unlike the Krispy Kreme glaze, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just never thought anything about me would be compared to a donut. But Andy, these are so. It's a, it's this a is a compliment thing. of the this is yours, highest right? order. No, no, this thing. is theirs. Okay. Mine isn't as shiny. Um, Andy I'm is known for, for his beautiful skin. Donut is nice. You want to try a donut? Yeah. What's your favorite kind of donut? I mean, I like the plain. Okay, good. That one you pointed to. That's the one I want you to have. You mean the ugliest one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good bite. That's a good donut. Right? Yeah. Do you want to compare it to the Krispy Kreme? Glaze is essentially like the same. Exactly the same. Besides the shine, mm -hmm. yeah, consistency, sugar content, nailed it. Great. But there's a little bit more flavor in your dough, I feel like. Mm. Definitely. Okay. Well, I should hope so. Texture of the inside is a little bit different. Yeah. But I mean, there's no way you were gonna get that. Yeah. Zero percent chance. I totally agree. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a good one. I'm really bad at high fiving with my right hand. Yeah. Harris makes me practice sometimes. Wait, wait. Because I'm a lefty. Yeah, wait, this is going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Still not good? Wait, what? what what's You're also a lot here? taller. 
Yeah. Wait, try is one, it a one, height one. thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why, are so... <laughs> Why are we so bad at it? I was worried a little bit at the beginning of Krispy Kreme that people had the expectation that it would be easy because it's dough and yeast and that stuff that I'm familiar with, but that I was going to really struggle with it and then I was going to feel bad. But um, I think that the amount of like the like ratio of work to payoff was really satisfying in this one. Like I worked just hard enough to feel like I earned it, but not so hard that I wanted to throw myself off a cliff. I don't think I held myself to a higher than normal standard on this particular one. I think I held myself to the normal standard that I have for like a, a baking recipe or a pastry recipe, which is to say, it should be good. I was not forced to try <laughs> to attempt this beyond day one. I wanted to attempt it beyond day one. And also I believe that we have finally dispelled any remaining suspicion of a day three curse. <laughs> no, it's, day yeah, no, yeah. Day, day one curse. All right, this one was really fun. I really like making Krispy Kreme donuts. The next one is going to be miserable, I'm sure, just karmically speaking. So curious to see what that one is. Here's how you make gourmet Krispy Kreme donuts for the dough. In the bowl of a large stand mixer fitted with a dough hook, combine 30 ounces all-purpose flour, a half ounce kosher salt, two ounces honey, one packet active dry yeast, and four ounces unsalted butter cut into small pieces and make a well in the center. In a separate bowl with four ounces egg, two ounces honey, one ounce vegetable oil, one tablespoon vanilla extract, and 16 ounces tepid whole milk. Pour liquid into the well and mix on low until a shaggy dough forms. Then increase the speed and continue mixing until the dough is very smooth and supple and no longer sticky. Gather the dough into a ball, flour it all over, and place it in a clean bowl, covered. Let it sit at room temperature until nearly doubled in size, then transfer to the refrigerator and chill until cold, preferably overnight. Scrape the dough onto a floured surface and roll out to a half inch thickness, working quickly and flouring as needed to prevent sticking. Use two circle cutters to punch out three and a quarter inch diameter donuts with a one and a quarter inch cutout, fitting them as closely together as possible to maximize yield. Arrange each donut on its own square of parchment and allow to proof at room temperature until puffed, which could be as few as 10 minutes. Fill a large Dutch oven a third of the way up the sides with neutral oil and heat to 325 Fahrenheit. Working in batches, fry the donuts, turning once until the donuts are golden brown all over, except for a pale ring around the sides, three to four minutes. Let cool in a wire rack. For the glaze, combine 600 grams powdered sugar, a pinch of kosher salt, two teaspoons vanilla extract, 30 grams refined coconut oil, and 150 grams whole milk in a bowl and whisk until smooth. Pour slowly over the cooled donuts and rubbing them completely. Let the glaze set at room temperature. How long have you been waiting to show us the squash? You, you know, it, like, you, you have... think you're giving me a gift by giving me this donut, which you are, <laughs> but I think I'm giving you an even greater gift. I don't even know what to do with all of the content I have captured <laughs> of the squash. <laughs> Would you say that you are obsessed with squash? Yeah, this is like the 10th time Gabby has tried to put this away, and I've like pulled it back out. Oh, it's, it's over here again, by the way. It's, you know, it's just like the butt or not. Sorry, did you get that? <laughs> oh, I, I look over, I see a butternut squash and five people with their cameras all surrounding it taking photos. It's just, you know, can it, are you going to, have you decided already that you're going to edit all this out? Okay, well, for the record, I just spent like five minutes making it like a chive G-string. <laughs> anyway. Where is that? <laughs> I'll show it to you later. This is not for the internet. Oh my anyway, god. If, if there is anything that was made for the internet, it's probably this. <laughs>